Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to do just a little bit of a taste of image magic. So this is a terminal-based application. You actually can get a version as well for Mac and Windows, so it is technically cross-platform. But uh, this is something that is pretty much installed on most Linux distros. You don't generally need to get it installed separately. What it will allow you to do is image manipulation from the terminal. And it is infinitely more complex than most other systems that I have seen. And so what we actually want to do here is I just want to walk on over to their website just to give you a taste of what you can do, like literally you can come into this thing and use it from the terminal. You can create animations from a sequences of images. You can produce composites. You can just do simple conversions. You can draw on it. You can, I mean, there's the number of things I think you could probably um, get an entire life specialty in this one program and still not even scratch the surface of it. So uh, they do have a, a big community tab with uh, some forums that you can uh, ask some basic questions. They have some simple command line tools. What I'm going to do here today, though, is I'm just going to show you a couple of the ways that I use this uh, because I actually use Image Magic for doing batch file processing. And uh, that's really the, the one feature that GIMP does not have that Photoshop does is batch conversions and, and batch processing. But with a terminal command, a little bit of a script, and uh, maybe just a single line of code, you can actually do all of your conversions and things utilizing image magic. So for the individual thing you're going to need to do, you're just going to want to go in and and just have a look at um, at what your features are and build the script that you want to build. But I just want to give you a, a quick taste. So the first thing we have here is up here I have some images. These are the images that I use when I put a picture of myself on a thumbnail. And so if you look at these, I snapped these photos with my good professional camera, and you'll see the size down here. These are 6,000 by 3368. I don't need them that large. Uh, really, I would I, I would like them about 1600 by 900 or or something like that. Um, although what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and make them quite a bit smaller, um, just in a single line batch process. The easiest one to use is your Mogrify. So your Mogrify is to be used with caution because if you are setting your Mogrify to the same format then it's actually going to uh, it's actually going to go ahead and overwrite the files that you have. So you want to be a little bit more careful with it. In this case here, since we're starting with capital JPEG images and we're going to lowercase JPEG images, then it's actually not going to overwrite my files. It's just going to add them in. The Mogrify command, while it is a little bit more dangerous, does actually allow you to start with a single image and then get whatever the output image is of the exact same size. That's my, why you might want to do it. So this one here, I'm just going to call it with Mogrify. I don't need to use Image Magic before it. We're going to resize it. Let's actually resize this to 1600 by 1600. Now you'll notice that our originals were not squares. Um, that's actually okay. The system will not, unless you specify with a special tag to ignore the aspect ratio, it always goes by the aspect ratio. So this one here, and I don't remember if it's going to go with our height or our width. We'll go ahead and test that out. There's always a lot of testing. Format, I'm going with JPEG. And quality, I want to go 85. So this is the JPEG quality ratio. Uh, so basically, we're going to take these files from like 6 megabytes down to a, a few K. And then, of course, the star is going to grab everything. So I'll just go ahead and uh, copy the line here. And... What we're going to do is just make sure that you are in your directory where you want to be. So I'm on my desktop slash new, and we'll go ahead and paste this guy in, push the button, and you can see that it's doing the work here, just adding our new images. It does not overwrite them because the lowercase JPEG and the capital JPEG are def technically different images. So you can see here that these are 146K instead of 6.9 meg for the same image. You can see down here it is 1600 by 898, so it maintained the aspect ratio. And if I actually look at the images, 
let me just go ahead, find the two images that are basically the same image. You'll see here on the screen, they look nearly identical. We really haven't had any major quality loss. Just the fact that this is 6,000 pixels and seven megabytes. This is 1600 and 147K. We were able to do that whole folder all at once. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of these guys. And uh, we'll go ahead and just drop back down to what we had. Now, I have another script here. Now, this script is actually the one that I'm using right now. I'm redesigning my one website, um, my Christian site, and I'm putting all the podcasts, and I have 147-something podcasts over there. I think I just posted 148 today, or maybe it's 149 today, whatever it was. And all of the thumbnails I have over there are large. They're either 1080p or they're, um, or they're 1600 by 900. So what I want to do is I'm sending it over to a new system where I only need a 500 pixel wide image. So instead of having a few megabytes per image, um, or even, I think they're like 600K per image each, I'm instead cutting them back down in size to a uh, just 33K or something per image. So to do that, I'm actually using the convert tag instead. Now, when you're using convert, if you were to run the convert the same way as this, then it's actually going to do all of the images, but the convert uses a different naming convention, and it's going to take the last image here, and then it's just going to affix uh, dash one, dash two, dash three, dash four, and that's not what we want. So what we need is we need to set the image to rename itself based on the original rename. And so this guy here, what I did is we're calling convert instead of modify, and then I'm actually specifying here the final format that I want. So I want to set the pixel at 500 wide and then whatever the uh, the height happens to be, whatever that happens to be. The quality, we want this set at 80. I don't need any more for the new format. And then now we're setting a file name as the base name. So here's the file name base percentage base name, and then our output file, we're actually going to drop these into a folder called 500, and I think the 500 was just meaning 500 pixels. That's just what I was doing to convert the files and maintain the originals in an easier to format way so I didn't have to fight with the directories here. And then you can see we're doing the file name, file name base.jpg. So in other words, it's utilizing and storing a variable based upon the original input name. So to pull this one off, I am going to have to create a directory called 500, which of course right now is empty. So we'll go ahead and uh, copy this code over here. Let's go ahead and just clear the screen out just for simplicity. All right, so we'll paste this guy in. Now there is one change we're going to have to do to this. And uh, my original script is assuming that my images, input images, are JPEG with a lowercase extension. And in my case here, that we're doing here, they're capital extension. So I'm just going to replace this lowercase JPEG with a capital JPEG. And uh, I am going to need to create the directory. So let's go ahead and create the directory there. And uh, let's just go ahead and jump into the directory. And now we're going to run our script. So it's going to run, and what it's going to do now is it's going to input all of these images, and then it's going to output the images exactly the way I wanted, only now they're all going to be 500 pixels wide. So now we've just done a batch process, took just a second, and now we took all of our images in, in a high quality size, we've dropped them down to 500 uh, pixels wide, maintain the aspect ratio, and look at that file size, 32K for these files. So that's kind of what uh, what you're going to want to do. Now, another application that I use for, for doing these, uh, let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and delete all these images now. So one of the things that I've done with this is I have a script for when I'm doing books. So when I actually go and uh, put my books up for sale on a site, I want to have some sample pages there. And so it's kind of a pain to take the, the sample books that we have, and then we're going to, uh, we're then going to um, uh, take the PDF files out. We're going to convert them into images and then fight with them. So I actually wrote a script called PDF to JPEG to do that. Now to do that, I'm going to need some PDFs. So I have here a, uh, I have here one of my books. Now I'm not going to open it up in the basic document viewer. I actually want to open it up inside of PDF Shuffle because PDF Shuffler allows me to 
uh, select and extract certain pages that I want to use. So let's go ahead and just zoom in here just a little bit so I can see the pages that I might, might want to have. And what we're going to do is we're just going to extract a certain number of pages here. So well, let's go ahead and just grab the pages we want. So let's grab maybe the uh, table of contents. We're going to hit export selection. This is why I use PDF Shuffler here. Let's go to desktop new. We'll call this one one. So we'll see one dot PDF. Let's grab this guy. It's going to be two. This guy's going to be three. Just giving people enough of a of a sample there to whet their appetite. All right, the next one I want to do, let's grab, there's some nice styling here on these chapters. So let's export this one. We're up to five, six, seven, and then let's go down to the very bottom and grab the general bibliography. Eight and the index nine and ten. In a real world situation, I would also grab the front cover and the back cover, but that gives us uh, that just gives us ten PDFs here. You can see they're they're very high quality in size, too big to be using on a website. So converting these guys manually will be a little bit of a pain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my PDF to JPEG here. This is going to grab all the PDF files inside of a single directory, and it's going to convert them with a certain quality size into a certain uh, either height or width size. And we're going to drop them into a folder called JPEG. So let's go ahead and create a folder called JPEG. All right. So now what we're going to do, I don't want to copy this. I could actually just go and call this script as the bash script, or I can just kind of paste it in. So what we'll do now is we'll just come up here, paste this guy in, let the script do its run. It's going to sit there for about maybe a few seconds. And then if we go into our JPEG folder, you can see it's actually now outputting the JPEG images in the sizes that we are going to need to push these up onto the website. I think this is the size anyway. I might have to do one more batch process for size conversion. I can't remember. Okay, yeah, so these are outputting the largest. So the reason I, I output the largest I'm remembering now is that uh, we want to output the larger and then I batch process them through a second script which drops the size. Let me go find that second script. That is over here, documents, scripts. I think it's this one. Let's go ahead and have a look at this script here. Oh, yep, yep, that's what this does. So it grabs all of these guys and then drops them into a folder called resize. So let's go into our JPEG folder. Let's go over here, create a new folder called resize. I could probably do this all in one single step if I wanted to. Um, in fact, if I were to just add this line under the, the bottom one and just run it as a single script, I would do that. Now, these ones here are the exact size and quality format that I need to post to a website. So you can see how quickly I went through even having to go down and hunt down another script, how quickly now I can extract pages from a finalized manuscript into individual PDFs, roll them up to JPEGs, and then resize them. And once again, if I went through and set this, I could actually just add another line to this guy here and uh, uh, and then just go ahead and uh, drop them into the exact sizes. So uh, if I could actually, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at what I might do to do that. We'll just go ahead and do that as a quick test here. Okay, so now with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of experimenting around, I could create a single script here, which would do the full conversion. And so we just basically started with our basic PDF conversion, and then I just added the convert size. But you can see here we just changed this to now it's searching for this JPEG directory, and then doing everything within that. So our PDFs are still here. Our JPEG directory is empty. We can copy this guy here. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, paste this guy here. You'll see it only pastes the first line first because there's a done application that needs to run. So the first pass, it's creating that larger file size that we need. If we direct create directly into the smaller file size, there's an error with how it creates because of the densities of PDFs. So now it's following in with our second script after that. 
and now our single run, we can now have the exact size that we want. So how can you put this all together? All right, so now we can simplify this. Now that we've created our script that does everything we need it to do, that's this file right here. We're just gonna copy this guy into the directory where our PDFs are at. So now if we do a list directory, we can see the PDF to JPEG here. Now what we need to do is just bash this file. It's gonna do its thing here, and now it's gonna go into all those PDFs. It's going to first create the full size, and then it's gonna go back in behind us and do a uh, the, the remastering to the smaller size. So I need this a website scale. And so you can see it's still doing its thing and uh, now it's done. So now if I open this up, I started with the full scale PDF that I needed directly from my produced manuscript. And now it's given me all of the file sizes that I need exactly in one simple bash script. So walking through again what we did, the hashtag over here, just uh, that's just a comment reminding me what it's going to do. It's going to grab each one of our uh, each one of our items inside of the the PDF, drop them into JPEG dot um, uh, the J JPEG slash JPEG images, and then it's going to go into all of your. Um, into those once again, and it's going to resize all of those. Again, I can just call that by calling bash. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and uh, I could do something like keep this all in one location and then bash it from a different place, changing directories and things like that. We're not going to go into this from here. I'll just say, just take this script that you need, drop it into the file where you want it, and then run the scripts and it will run exactly the way you need it. So there is a little bit about utilizing image magic to simplify things in conversion. This is against a program that's so deep, we just scratched the surface here, but I just kind of wanted to show you how I'm using this in the scope of regular production to get things done. So with that, thanks for watching. Let me know if uh, you knew Image Magic could do all this fun stuff and uh, how you could pull things like this off in automation uh, inside of Linux. And uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Give us a like and a comment down there, and we will see you next time. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.